actually seemed to like kind of work. Yeah, <laughs> that that, that seemed to work, honestly. You got six percent. Yeah, no, but like like once it starts, I'm gonna oh, okay. plug it back in. Okay, yeah, like this this is that's like way better, but I just need to go live. Um, yeah, it's it you have to press it go get, let's, let's try it. Yeah. There we go. Oh, there you go. Okay, ready? Yeah, no, I'm good. <coughs> good afternoon, and welcome to the second game of this doubleheader between the Michigan Wolverines and the Iowa Hawkeyes. I'm TJ Fossmeyer, and this one, a different voice for the second game, but there's a familiar voice up here with me in the booth, and that is Kobe Siegel. And we got the second game, like I said earlier. If you want to run us through Kobe, what went on in the first game, I caught a bit of the end, and it looked like to be an exciting one. Yeah, so, I mean, the first game was uh, was very exciting. Uh, Durkowski started, gave up four quick runs on some really soft hits. Then Hannah George pitched six innings, only let up one run. Wolverines came back from 5-1, to one, led by two home runs from Ava Costello and Maddie Erickson was four for four. Now, now let's get, get to game two. All right. So we're just about underway as Aaron Hain gets to start in the circle. Riley Mosley, an awful show bunt. Maddie Erickson will fire that down to Kiki Thole who will not corral that. So Riley Moss at first, the leadoff hitter for the Hawkeyes will be safe at first. We'll run you around the horn real quick for the Wolverines. If you have followed Michigan softball this season, it is usual suspects all around with Kiki Thole at first, Indiana Lanford at second, Ella McVeigh at short, and Manny the Hot Corner is Maddie Erickson. And then the outfield from left to right is Ellie Sealer, Ginny Conway, and Ella Stevenson with Aaron Hain, who delivers the 0-0 pitch. High for a ball. And sharing the battery with Aaron Hain is Lily Valamont. It's usual batty pair or battery pairing for the Wolverines, Hain and Valamont. Here comes the... Fires that another ball high, 2-0 count with Jenna Yon up to bat following the leadoff hit off uh, Riley Moss. And him fires the 2-0 pitch. Falls in there for a strike. Valmont, the late call from home plate umpire Susan Eds. Was waiting for that one. She knew it was a strike. Now we're on a 2-1 count, Aaron Hain. Fires in. Jenny Young has to jump out of the way of that one. That's an inside pitch. 3 1 count. Riley Moss at first. Aaron Hain checks the wristband, puts the right foot on the rubber, sets and fires. And that's fouled into the Michigan dugout to run the count full. And uh, for this Hawkeyes team, Jenny Young is their most dangerous hitter. She's hitting 379 on the season, but she also combines that with power. She's the only Hawkeye in this lineup that has a home run on the season. She's got three. Full count pitch delivered, and that is popped up to the right field on the warning track as Stevenson, and that'll be caught. Riley Moss will tag up, so she advanced into scoring position, and that was a rocket off the bat. Of Jenna Young there. It's a big first out for Aaron Hay, but there's a runner in scoring position. With Sujin Barry coming up to bat. Yeah, and uh, Sujin Barry, we saw like, some fantastic defensive plays on the first inning, but good base running by Moss to, to get in scoring position. So the first pitch will fall in there for a strike, breaking ball. And yeah, and you're exactly right. Sujin Barry made an immediate impact for Iowa as a freshman at a big um, series against Wisconsin. 500 batting average. Two extra base hits, four RBIs, as she fouls the second pitch back. So she's quickly down 0-2. And, but, uh, but like a lot of these Hawkeyes, she might get on base a lot, but she's not necessarily a threat to slug. The next pitch is in high to work the count into a 1-2 count. And Aaron Hayne. Pitch one in in relief earlier to close it out. Just about 30 minutes ago, and she's back into the start as she delivers. Barry will foul that one straight back. We'll do it again, one-two count. 
and and that hits that 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 pitch by Haynes shows she's got Barry in kind of uh, protect mode through a little bit high. Yep. The one two pitch, and that's a rocket to right center field, and that'll be gone. So again, the Hawkeyes score early. The two-run shot by Sujin Barry. And the Hawkeyes are up two to nothing as she's limping around the base, but she is still hyped up to provide her team with a quick and early lead. Two nothing, Hawkeyes up. And that was a moonshot to right center field. Yeah, and after about two minutes, I said she didn't have a lot of yeah. slug. Well, there is the slug. There's, I mean, there's the slug. She's just a freshener, her first homer of the season, and she also leads the team in RBIs. You can see why, but th this is similar to what we saw in the first game. The Hawkeyes get out to an early lead now. Can Michigan bounce back? Yeah, and, and Hayne throughout this season has gotten herself into jams and has in a remote cleanup hitter, Sammy Diaz up. Starting the senior first baseman. In this one, she's been the perennial starter at first base for Iowa pretty much her whole career. She takes that high pitch to even up the count one and one. Valmont could not handle that one, but base is empty, no plays all around. And about 40 minutes ago, Sammy Diaz hit the laser that McVeigh uh, jumped up to catch to end the game so she's looking for some revenge I suspect yeah exactly so Jennifer Brundage the assistant coach the pitching Wolverine team will check in with her freshman pitcher and yeah you're exactly right that was a and boy what a play by McVay what a game ending double play that was man she is so good good at it and 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 with this uh with this to a hole Michigan's gonna need uh of defense to keep the score where it is. So Hayne will deliver the 2-0 pitch in there for a strike. 2-1 count. Defense playing. Hayne will set onto the to even up the count 2-2 two and two with one out. That's ball. The next breaking ball is outside and away to run the count full 3-2. Check delivers. That's a big cut, big strikeout from Aaron Hain. And that is out number two. And Sammy Diaz had no chance. That That's two swings on the fastball where Aaron Hain just blew her away. Yeah, great ability to claw that. Because Devin Greer is up and pops that one out to Ellie Sealer in the left. And that is a quick out number three. So that mound visit by Jennifer Brundage. Proven effective as Aaron Hain gets two quick outs. Two off that two run shot in the right center field by Sujin Berry. Yeah, and and, and for, uh, for whatever reason, pitching coaches and mound visits, sometimes they, they just have a way of working magic and just staunch uh, run stopper. Conway Stevenson, Castellas is having a potential. Any lane can hit lead off Ellen can as well as Ellie Sealer will take that first pitch outside for a ball into a 1 0 count. And then you also have Dunn at start, Jackson at third, and Klosterman at, in left, Baines in center, and Moss in right. With Devin Greer and Lindsay in the back. Yeah, I wonder what happened to Sugan Berry. So Sugan Berry. Dan Lanford will bunt right in front of the catcher and uses her speed to easily reach first. Uh, test catch it early and it works. Yeah, I agree. Indiana Lanford, that speedy threat for the Wolverines. So Maddie Erickson will dig into the back of the box as she grounds that over the pitcher's head. Big bat for this lineup as she sets in to the back of the box. Greer delivers and she will ground that into the middle. She walked three three times in the first game. I So she'll dig into the again. Kiki Cole will dig for second. That is a stand-up RBI double. And the Wolverines answer the Hawkeye. Let that one go for ball one. 
and Kiki Coles had herself. Fell into the zone, 2-1 count. Kiki Cole on second. Two outs. Her delivery beautiful to hear in an order, much better than yesterday. Pretty good crowd out here, here at the Hutch. And here comes Just um, down to zero, Michigan. I mean, early season turns. I had the pleasure of going to Tampa for that. And the Bassett in some games, most of those games actually did not come alive. Aaron Hain will set in again to Grace Baines, the senior center fielder. Kind of right in that right center gap for the Hawkeyes. So Klosterman will set in. We'll deliver, and that'll be a ball for four pitch walk. For Klosterman and
two runners on, one on first, one on second. Jalen Adams coming in. Yes, she pitched the first game, held the Wolverines down for about four innings, then uh, they jumped on her, but, but she hits two. Aaron Hain will actually be subbed out. Durkowski will come in to replace. A quick replacement here in the second. So Durkowski will, will warm up. Look, the scoreboard here at the Hutch is showing out in center field, looks like to be a fire just behind the baseball stadium. Smoke's coming, oh black God. smoke's coming out. So we hope everyone's okay over there. It's got the outfield's attention. So Durkowski will, will get warmed up. The Wolverine ace leading in most pitching categories for this team. Shown dominance this season, put on master classes against you know, multiple formidable teams from the number 10 ranked Florida, whose lineup, that lineup is absolutely stacked, to just shutting down Big Ten opponents like Illinois and Purdue. And you know, she struggled early, earlier in game one, so she'll look to bounce back in this one. We'll likely see most of this game, if not all of it. LeBeau's Lebeau status is still questionable, has made some appearances, but those have been short-lived, whether that's to injury or some other factor. We hope she's okay as well. So Dukowski will check the wristband, put the right foot on the rubber, will set and deliver to Jalen Adams, who shows bunt, will pull back for a strike. 0-1 count. And with uh, nobody out in first and second, certainly a situation you see many teams sacrifice bunt. The 0 1 pitch, she will bunt that one straight back, foul, 0 2 count. Now with 0 2, the bunting comes a lot more risky. Fouled off to strike out. So we'll, she, we'll see if she bunts again. Infield still playing back. Jane Adams, Adams will set, will not show bunt, will foul that one back. We'll do it again in 0-2 count. And one thing that sacrifice bunt does, if if you miss if you miss twice, you put yourself in 0-2 right. hole. So we'll do it again, 0-2 count in the pitch. Off speed floats in there for a ball. 1-2 count. Runners on first and second. Klosterman on first. Baines at second. Jalen Adams up. There's the pitch, and she will check her swing, but she breaks the plane, and that's Zerkowski's first strikeout. First batter seen in this one. That's a big out number one. Right, Jalen Adams gearing up for the velocity, but Zerkowski just Tossed it in there. So Dukowski will start up against Avery Jackson, the sophomore third baseman. And that'll fall in there for a ball. It's one thing that's so effective about Dukowski, the, 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 the difference between her fastball and it, Yeah, velocity. it's disgusting, actually. So she will pitch it again. That'll foul off to the third base side. And you're right, the ability to, you know, Top that fastball off at around 70 miles an hour and pull the strain on that off speed. It's incredible to watch. And and you can see the swings from the Iowa hitters. Yeah. It's like it's like they check their swing. And There's they, not really yeah. sure. The one one pitch. She will show bunt. Pull back. It'll, it'll be a two one count. And Valmont getting up after every pitch, very hyper vigilant behind the plate. So do it a 2 1 count, one out. Runners on first and second. Dukowski will pitch. And again, another ball, 2 2 count. Yeah, with uh, 
with Rally Moss on deck, you do not want to walk Avery Jackson. So the 3 1 pitch. And yet another walk to load the bases. So Avery Jackson will take the free pass and go to first. And Riley Moss steps in. So we've seen this whole lineup for the Hawkeyes. So Joukowsky will pitch. And that'll fall outside of the zone again. And you gotta wonder. I mean, Drakowski's got to go long here. You got to go. You got to wonder: Should Drakowski have a bad outing? What do you do? But nonetheless, the one-zero pitch, and Riley Moss will fire that one into Erickson's glove, keep the runners in check, and will still have bases loaded. Great reaction from Maddie Erickson at the hot corner, and that is a big out, potential run saving, you know, two runs. Potentially three could have scored off that. N not out of it yet with uh, with Jenny Young. Yeah. So Jenny Young's up. That first pitch from Dukowski will fall in for a strike. She goes to over liable, as I call it, her off speed. Jenny Young, just a freshman. She's going to be a problem for Big Ten teams her whole career. The 0 1 pitch will fall outside of the zone to even up the count. And Jenna Young, yeah, she's the offensive leader in most offensive categories for the Hawkeyes. Gatorade Player of the Year last season out of high school. And had an incredible stat line as a senior. The 1-1 pitch. And that will be popped up in between the shortstop and the left field. Two runners will score. Runners on second and third now. And that is a two RBI double from Jenna Young to make this a 4-1 ball game. Yeah, just a, uh, just, it, it just snuck in between yeah. McVay and Sealer and just, it just plays perfectly, but it just, it, it, it wasn't hit well, but with runners on base, yeah. sometimes it happens. So instead of Sujin Barry, like we saw in the last inning, we have Tory Bennett. Up to bat in this one, who was the starter at shortstop last season, last two years, or last season, sorry, for the Hawkeyes. We have not seen the lineup too much this season. She nonetheless, bats in a big spot here for the Hawkeyes as she is quickly down 0 and 2 with two outs. Drakowski checks, checks the dugout, checks the wristband, looks to retire the side. Here comes the 0 2 pitch. That will be fouled straight back, and we'll do it again, 0-2 count. That's, I mean, uh, similar lead for the Hawkeyes we saw last game. 4-1, Michigan, of course, not out of it. Mm -hmm. Dukowski delivers. And Valmont had to dive to her right to corral that one in. So that will be a, a ball, 1-2 count. Good snag by Valmont behind the plate to keep that one in, prevent the runners from advancing. The so one-two pitch, that'll be outside of the zone to even up the count two and two. Tori Bennett, I'm not sure she expected to face Turkowski coming in this one. No. 2-2 count, she takes a big cut at the off speed there for a strikeout. And Drakowski retire the side, but again, a two-run inning for the Hawkeyes off a two-RBI double from Jenna Young. And we're seeing deja vu. Four runs early on for the Hawkeyes, and Michigan looking to claw that one back. They do have one run across. It's a three-run deficit in this one as we move to the bottom of the second. Yeah, but uh, this for for Verdurkowski, she is she's so nasty. But um, just two walks that inning, and and she doesn't walk 
a lot of people. Anyways, so uh, oh. you uh, only 39 walks in in like 119 innings. So th that's not usually um, it's not usually a problem. But if you usually if you walk two walks and if you have two walks in an inning, it's not gonna go well most of the time. Yeah, and you know she's kind of had some of that command issues early on in the season. She looked to get over that. But, you know, two walks in inning, never good. And against Florida and Tampa, she nearly walked the winning run in. Uh, the bases were loaded at the bottom of the seventh. She nearly walked the winning run in. But, again, her just ability to, you know, keep hitters off balance with a lively fastball and the ability to pull the string on the off speed. She got out of that jam, and the Wolverines ended up winning that game. So Janisa Conway, the big freshman, will step in to lead off in this and in, and she has certainly made an impact for this Wolverine program since arriving to campus, solidified that starting center field job as soon as she came to Ann Arbor. And she takes that first pitch in for a strike and quickly down 0-1. She just combines power, on base skills, defense. Yeah, she's already won Big Ten Freshman of the, of the Year. I've seen her do some amazing things. She takes that. Big cut at that one and fouls that one back. Nearly hit Ella Stevenson on deck. We'll do it 0-2 count. And what's amazing about her stat line, she leads the team in strikeouts, but also in walks. You don't see that very often. So Greer will deliver, and that'll fall just outside of the zone for a ball. 1-2 count. And she's a very, a very patient hitter. Gets in. Just lots of deep counts. And she'll take a big cut at that one for a strikeout. And Devin Greer has shown her stuff in this one. Limiting this offense to one run. As Ella Stevenson will step into the box. And she has come in her own of late. She struggled to start the season. But two weeks ago, one freshman of the week in the Big Ten. Do some some fantastic play against Indiana, where she went six for twelve with six RBIs, off two doubles and two runs scored. Just incredible. She takes a big cut at that one, even up the count one and one. There's there's been some swings here from from Valmont, Conway on the strikeout, and Stevenson. For whatever reason, they're they're uh, not seeing Greer Greer well. Yep. So Greer will deliver again. Stevenson will think better of that one. We're at a 2-1 count. And Stevenson, another freshman who's made an impact, has solidified that starting right field spot. Since she came out, she delivers that right into center field just past Tori Bennett's glove at short. That'll be a base hit. So she will stand on first. For a, for a quick hit as Ava Castalis. The big power threat steps in. Here we go. She's chance to hit three home runs in a day. Not quite as good as three home runs in a game, yep. but three home runs in a day would still be pretty good. Yeah, it, she is one player I'm very excited about this season. I've had the pleasure of calling numerous games so far this season, including the home opener as she takes that first pitch and that'll be right to the second baseman for a quick out number two. Anyway, in the home opener against Oakland, she ripped one in the left center field off the batter's eye of the baseball stadium. It was at least three quarters of the way up. It was an absolute rocket. That's so so she far. is so fun to watch. I heard she's hit one in the center field of the baseball stadium. So Ella McVeigh is up. She shows bunt, pulls back, and that'll fall in there for a ball. Nonetheless, two outs. 1-0 count, Ella Stevenson on first. So Devin Greer will set him with a runner on. She will deliver. McVeigh will think better of it, but nonetheless, that'll fall into the zone for a strike to even up the count. We're already seeing, uh, seeing, seeing Langford get on uh, via bunt. So McVeigh will take that one in for a strike. I mean, she wouldn't bunt in a two-out situation. I, I wouldn't know. think. So. I wouldn't think so. Uh, 
unless she thinks it's her best chance to get on base, which I don't think so. Yeah. so the, here comes the one-two pitch. And she is, I believe, hit. <laughs> <laughs> I think Alan McVay thought she was hit on some confusion here. I don't know, Alan McVay just ran off after that one. And a one-two count look, potentially hit on that one. I think Ellis Stevenson Odds didn't realize yeah, that. Yeah, I think Ellis Stevenson was kind of caught off guard there. A weird sequence of events here. I think Iowa's coaching staff may want to challenge this. It so pretty it clearly seemed to, uh, like, uh, like McVay knew right away. Yeah, I think, she, yeah, she was confident she was hit. So Ellie Sealer, so the lineup card will flip over. Ellie Sealer will dig in with runners on first and second. McVeigh on first, Stevenson on second. And Sealer will call time. It's a big spot for the Wolverines if they want to claw this back early. But Greer is having herself a great game so far. So she will deliver. And Sealer will take that one into the zone for a strike. 0 1 count. That was a weird sequence of events. That was <laughs> bizarre. Sealer will dig into the back of the box. She'll pop that one up just over Iowa's dugout. And we'll do it at a 0-2 count. One of my favorite things is the is is the event staff finds every foul ball. Yeah, they not too keen on souvenirs here. Here, so here comes the 0-2 pitch. See, it will take that one in outside. One, two count. Yeah, why is that? Softball, they're not too keen on handing out souvenirs to the fans here. So Greer will deliver the one, two count. That again will fall outside of the zone. Two, two count. That is stone cold patience from Ellie Sealer, who is down 0 and 2 to let two pitches go by and even up the count 2 and 2 with two outs and two on. In the bottom of the second. So Greer will deliver, and that's a rocket into right, cent right center field, but the center fielder in Baines will grab that one. That's a big out, number three, to prevent potentially two runs scoring off that. So Greer will get herself out of the jam, and Dierkowski will come into the circle again in this top of the third. Yeah, a, a well-struck ball. I thought that would just find the gap. I, I think, I think Baines was shading right slightly. And if she wasn't out there, might not have. And that's nice. Conway hit one to the warning track. That Baines dropped. She bounces back there. Again, Drakowski in the circle. Same defensive range is all around for the Wolverines. And I get to admire Maddie Erickson. It's fun to watch these warm-ups. She's got some zip on it. For the Hawkeyes with Greer and Baines following. Let me see if Durkowski can limit, dial it in here in the top of the third. So she will set in Sammy Diaz ready in that righty batter's box. She will take the first pitch in there for a strike. So Durkowski's quickly up 0-1 hard for lots of teams to to, to square up uh, consistently. So Sammy Diaz will pop a big out number one as Devin Greer will step in to the lefty's batter's box. It seems like this Hawkeye offense you know, can get solid contact, solid contact off Drakowski but is letting, her, letting the defense so Devin Greer will step in. Durkowski will deliver. She's quickly behind 1 0. It's the 1 0 count. One thing that maybe you're saying, I think uh, the Hawkeyes uh, do not want to hit Durkowski's off speed pitch. They, they want to hit the fastball. Durkowski will float. That off-speed pitch in for a strike. 
I think it's so important for Dukowski to get ahead early. These early Let's see if Dukowski advantage. Baines will take a big cut at that one. Looked like to try to check her swing, but her momentum was going too fast there. She's down one and two. Durkowski looking to retire the side and quick. I'm trying to hit it. I, I, I think with an off speed, I think she could potentially look silly. So Durkowski will deliver one, two count, and that is popped up. will pop that one straight back. Nice grab by the fan just behind home plate. We'll and the team to count two. Good fight from Baines at the plate to call you out. So left center field falling for a base hit. Conway clears that, fires that to second. Fortunately, not in time. Oh, one count. And I thought Conway had a play at second. She she fielded that very cleanly. Third. Hawkeyes just able to. To make that's uh, down 2 0, and Jennifer Brundage will come out for a mound visit for second of the day. She'll settle for a double and now extends the yep. deliver. Off will be in there for a strike. Jalen Adams way out in front of that one, looked to check it at the last moment, but she already batter got play by Coach Bull there. Even that ball, like, Adams big. Heavy. Yeah, Grace Baines, two runs scored. Don't see anything out behind the baseball field, so hopefully everyone's okay. Look like bond with the frame. See the corner infielder pitch, and that'll be outside, even up to count one and one. And you've seen still get real close. So Grill delivered. That'll be counted to shortstop. And she, like I just said, loses that by half a step, and that's a quick out number one. Yeah, just okay. like a plate appearance, grounds a short. See if Madison can turn on one if she gets a fastball in the zone. She'll take yet another pitch. Definitely foul territory, but that was just off the line. Yeah, it, it hit like right next to the yeah. white. Zagru will deliver with that fastball. That will late run up. Maddie thought it had an account. Well, no. Kiki As she uh, looks back for a sign, I think. Uh, yeah. Yeah, looking at her aunt. Probably taking. With Lily Valmont stepping in. Yeah, if, if, if Keith will. So it's a quick out, number three for the Hawkeyes, and Devin Greer really stifling this Michigan lineup in this one so far.
Yeah, Michigan really in the first inning they got two hits, but they haven't uh, they haven't been able to string hits together. They've gotten on the uh, walk a few times, but yeah. it's in four. It's Stranded four to Iowa's three runners that have been left on, but they've had five hits on five runs. It's a great game overall for Iowa in this one. Drakowski will set into the circle again. Looking to put up a zero in the column in this top of the fourth. We will see the same defensive alignment all around for Michigan. I thought we were going to see a catching change, but Valmont had to get into her gear after her at bat in the last frame. So you're underway in this one with Avery Jackson stepping in, who walked in her last plate appearance, advanced all the way to third, so she was part of that second inning rally that the Hawkeyes had. And if uh, Rakowski's gonna want to avoid walking her considering she's she's really struggled uh, this season. Rakowski will fire that fastball in for a strike. And that one had some zip on it. And uh, Avery Jackson on the season is three for 30. The sophomore from Kankakee, Illinois, will set in. We'll foul that one back over the press box. Maybe somebody will get that as a souvenir. I don't oh, know. If, no, I don't know if the oh, event oh, staff will chase oh, that oh, one Oh, no, down. the event stand is sprinting. They're all over that one. <laughs> They've got runners. <laughs> so we'll do it again. 0-2 count. Jackson steps in. Round that one straight to Drakowski. Great play. And that'll be out number one. And that was just self-preservation as the leadoff hitter, Riley Mott. It's a luxury to have a pitcher be able to feel their position yep. so well. Zerkowski will fire this one off. That'll be fouled straight back. She, I think she put a little extra juice into that pitch. She's been putting in some juice in this, in this frame thing here. But I've seen a top out at 71, 72. At that's fast. So yeah, it's, that's, that's. So the count's even now. One and one with one out. Infield playing short. Jarkowski. And that'll fall in there for a strike. Just caught part of the outside part of the zone. Like just the reaction time. So here comes the one-two pitch. That'll be grounded straight to Erickson. We'll field that cleanly, fired off to first for the second out of the inning. That one close. But Matty Erickson with that rocket arm. Rocket, yeah, you're right. Well, I mean, that with, with you can afford to right. take a little bit more time. Right. So Jen Young will step in, had a two RBI single in her last plate appearance. She's been a big part of this game for the Hawkeyes. But she takes that first pitch high for a ball, 1-0 count. Yon steps into the left lefty batter's box with an open stance. She will wait for the off-speed pitch that'll float just above the zone to even up the count one and one. Yeah, Tuna and Jenna Young hit a double last time. Do not want to fall behind her. No. Dukowski will deliver on this one. That'll fall just into the zone for a strike. The 2-1 count. Infield playing straight up. Dukowski will deliver. Just outside for a ball to run it into a 3-1 count. Valmont wanted that one. She paused there. Yeah. Much, much longer than she normally does. Really wanted that one called. Nonetheless, 3-1 count with two outs. No runners on. 3-1 pitch, and that is popped up to Ella McVeigh to make the easy play. 
to the third out. So the Hawkeyes go scoreless in the top of the fourth. They're the first time they've done that in this game and is still status quo five to one as we move into the bottom of the fourth. And at this point in the game, uh, it was it was five one at uh, going into the house guaranteed to come on this one. With McVeigh and Steeler potentially following up. So this would be it's a big chance for the Wolverines. Oh, I can't I can't really see it. I don't, I don't know who uh, was showing that aggression. She really wanted to make something happen there, but she really struggled in the season, you know, in these preseason tournaments and even to begin big, big Ten play, she struggled, but she's really coming to her own. Just got herself a hit ball game. Ava Gonzalez coming up. The batter will meet in the circle. And uh so Castells will step in a two run two home run performance earlier, so Greer will pitch. Yeah. Or in four home. Yeah, it, she's been impressive. So she will take that next pitch for a ball outside. I would say shocked, but the way she hits is off ball, I'm, didn't I am I am not things. shocked. Yeah, I picked up on that one. The really get a handle of a ball. So Ellen McVeigh will step in, will show ball. And that'll be grounded to the dirt. Stevenson will advance 60 feet to third. Looks to round, but will finger up. That's tough. Yeah, Couple two in and dirt in a row. Yep. So we'll outside, just outside, rather, for a ball to run the count full. Three and two. Speaks of the Hawkeyes up. And it's getting uh, the and Eric. So they're getting mental from the. In the last frame. In in a uh, very focused Beaver team in the game. We saw it uh, from uh, from and they were played, played, but could not get the throw in time. Yeah, what a play that was. She I mean she's she's she the count. She has well bought couch play very nicely. Indiana Laneford will play it at first for the out. This one says fired right back in the center field. Conway kind of struggles to field that one.
plus the Bible, she scores easily. Right. That could be a an important play if Kafka is able to escape this one. So we will see a whole team meeting in the circle for the Wolverines. Bonnie Full talking to her team. Grace Baines will pop up next for the Hawkeye runner at first. The freshman from Cascade, Iowa. Very athletic background, three sport athlete in high school. And this is her role on the team as a freshman as a primary pinch runner. So the Wolverines will go back to their normal defensive positions and Drakowski will look to set in with runners in the corners. Grace Baines up to bat who has had herself a great day, two for two with a single and a double in this one. So Drakowski will fire and Grace Baines will rip that into center field for a base hit. The runner from third will score in Tory Bennett. And Grace Baines continuing a great day of offensive production. Now going three for three. With an RBI single to score Tory Bennett from third. Now we have Simon at second, Baines at first, and it is a 6-1 ball game. Yeah, Grace Baines has scored two runs, gone on base three times, uh, and an RBI just what a game. So Rayleigh Klosterman will step in, donning the iconic Iowa number 22. <laughs> hard, to, hard to not mention Caitlin Clark when you see Iowa. She will take that first pitch in for a ball. Jarkowski will pitch it again. That'll be low and outside. To run the count 2-0. and Valmont again, hyper vigilant behind the plate to keep the runner from second at second. Jarkowski will settle in, kick back and fire. That'll fall into the zone for a strike for a 2-1 count. I, I, I bet it's possible they fought over that number. <laughs> so Gorkowski will settle in and that'll be grounded to Indiana Laneford who j gets past her glove. Stevenson makes the play, fires it home. It'll not be in time. That'll be the Hawkeyes' second run of the inning to make this a 7-1 ball game. Indiana Laneford had to come way to her left to make a play on that one. Kiki Thole was not in the right position to make that play. Indiana Laneford had to come running in. It just got past her glove. It's Stevenson, clean play from her, but the throw did not come in in time. So that's the second run for the Hawkeye offense. And this one. So now there are two runners in scoring position. Runner on second and third with Jalen Adams up and that'll be flied out to Ellie Sealer and left. The runner on third will tag up, so that'll be a sacrifice fly for Jalen Adams. And, and boy, this is getting out of control for the Wolverines. Yeah, I'm uh, on the play before, it looks like Grace Baines uh, ran like in front of the ball and uh, blocked I Indiana Langsford's vision and then um, just perfect fundamental baseball, I mean softball, yeah. sack fly. So Dukowski will settle in with Avery Jackson, takes a big cut at that one. <laughs> really looking to <laughs> hit that into the baseball field. Really would have put this one away. They get 0-1 count with two outs, runner on second, and that pitch is high above her, above Avery Jackson's head to even up the count one and one. And an important play from Jalen Adams put the ball in play because she struck out twice on some ugly swing, so a really good job by her yep. driving a run. So here comes the 1-1 pitch. That'll be inside for a ball. 2-1 count. That was a close pitch. Yeah, really close. So Klosterman is on second. Runner in scoring position for the Hawkeyes. Jackson, another huge cut at that one. Dean up the count, 2-2. Two and two. Comes a 2-2 pitch, and that'll be just above the zone to run the count full, three and two. Valmont ready to fire that over to second to keep Klosterman in check. 
He'll do it at a full count with two outs, a runner on second. At the top of the order due up. Moss will ground that to Erickson at third. He'll fire that for the easy play at first. But yet another big inning for the Hawkeyes, a three-run fifth inning to open up this game. Eight and one as we go into the bottom of the fifth. Yeah, yeah, just kind of a really nice ing for the Hawkeyes. It started pretty innocent enough with a infield single, and then uh, and then Klosserin gets one past Thorne Langford, and and and, and just kind of four singles and a sack fly later, and. Uh, uh, Three runs. Uh, that that's how the Hawkeye teams uh, usually scores runs by uh, by stringing hits together. Yeah, yeah. It just looked like a normal start of the inning, as you just said. It looked like Turkowski could have gotten out. I mean, she has a remarkable ability to get out of some pretty big jams, but you know, that was a that ugly inning for the Wolverines. So they'll look to bounce back as the top of the order is due up with Sealer leading off, Laneford following, and then Maddie Erickson following Indiana Laneford. Yeah, and if uh, if Michigan seven runs is a lot to ask in three innings, but if it's gonna happen uh, this fifth, they're gonna have to get a couple at least yep. in this fifth inning. Just looking to claw, claw this seven run deficit back. Prime opportunity with the top of the order coming up as Ellie Sealer sets in in the lefty batter's box. Devin Greer still in the circle, having a phenomenal game as Sealer will rip that in the right center field. Baines will make the play at the track for a quick out number one. Just hit really nicely, just yeah, that has just didn't get quite enough. And the wind here, it's blowing to right field, but it looks like it's slightly hurting. If it if that was helping just a little more, that might have snuck over the wall. Yeah, if, if, if this was yesterday with the crazy yes, wind yesterday, would have, maybe. I would have gone out. If you fifty, if you half sway, it would have gone out yesterday. Yeah. So Indiana Lanford do up, takes a big cut at that one for a strike once. She's quickly down 0 and 1 with one out. So Indiana Lanford singled and scored on her first plate appearance. She's the only run scored in this game. So that hits Indiana Laneford, so we have the speed threat and Laneford on at first with Maddie Erickson do up with Kiki Thole on deck. So this is a great chance for the Wolverines to claw this seven run deficit back with your two power hitters coming up, coming up next. Yeah, chance for the big boppers to do some damage. The big boppers. So Greer will Pitch outside, easy take for Erickson. Run the count, one and zero. If just anything in play will likely put Indiana Lanford in, in at third, just 60 feet away. So Greer will pitch. Erickson will foul that one back to even up the count, one and one. And Lanford at first doesn't have to be, uh, doesn't have to be too ugly. Uh, 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 aggressive yep. base running on out on the bases is the only thing you cannot have. Right. So Greer will check the wristband, set back and deliver. Erickson again will foul that one straight back. She's taking some big cuts in this one. This at bat, she's 0 for 2 so far with a ground out and a strikeout looking. Oh yeah, there's the event staff <laughs> tracking Actually that one down. hustling up, yeah, up the really stairs. Hustling. So Erickson will ground that. Two shortstop will make the force at second. Great stretch to tag the bag to get Indiana Laneford out. And that's a very high percentage play from Tory Bennett at short to take the speed threat off the base pass. But you still have a runner on for Michigan with two outs and Kiki Thole, the power threat that she has posed for Big Ten opponents of late. Now up. 
And what a play by Tori Bennett. Yeah. I thought that was just going to sneak past her, but she gloved that and then the stretch to tag the back to the force. So Kiki Phil will foul the first pitch back. 0 oh, 1 count. We've seen lots of Michigan hitters uh, foul balls back. I think like, yeah. just missing these pitches. So Cole will get ready in the back of the batter's box. Greer will deliver, take that pitch, low and in. It's even up to count one and one. Erickson at first. Valmont on deck should full reach base. Greer will deliver. Stone cold take from Kiki Full, but that'll fall into the zone for a strike. It's a one two count. Kiki Full will take some practice swings, step back into the box. The bat rests on her shoulder. She lifts up as Greer delivers, and that again will be fouled back. We'll do it again in the one two count. And Greer had Kiki Thole in, in, in swing around there, that one. Yeah. Way up above the zone. So we'll do it again. Here comes the one-two pitch. And that is outside to even it up two and two. We'll check the wristband. Right foot on the rubber, left foot back. We will cradle, kick back, deliver. And that pitch falls just outside the zone. Another stone cold take from Kiki Thole to make the count full. Three and two with two outs. Erickson at first and a seven run deficit for the Wolverines as the pitch goes and she fires that one into left field and that is gone. A deep drive by Kiki Thol to make this an eight to three ball game. And that's exactly what the coaching staff asks of Kiki Thol, the captain and the reliable big bat for the Wolverines. And that was a shot to left field. Yeah, Kiki Thol, she, she's been on base seven, or, uh, She's been on base six out of seven times. Wow, she's had herself a great stretch of games. You include Michigan State, the three-run performance, Central Michigan on Wednesday, and then so far in this doubleheader. Just great play from Kiki Thole as Lily Valmont will step in looking to continue the offensive momentum as she takes that first pitch outside for a ball, 1-0 count. So now it is a five-run deficit for the Wolverines. Certainly much more doable with two more innings of play in this one. So Greer will deliver, and that one's in the dirt. Easy take for Valamont. She's quickly ahead 2-0. Yeah, and uh, uh, before this thing, they said top of the lineup uh, needed to get some runs to get them a little bit more, uh, to get them a little bit back in this game. And yep. They are a little bit certainly the more way in this game. Certainly the way to do it. With that one, that was a rocket off the bat of Kiki Thole. Without a doubt, that was gone. Didn't hit the scoreboard of the batter's eye of the baseball field. Nonetheless, great two-run home run from Kiki Thole. Continues the offensive master class she's been putting on. As we'll have a quick mound visit from Greer to dial it up. It's, this is the first crack we've seen in her performance after the one run first inning earlier in this game. So Valmont will step into the box again. Greer will check the wristband. She is ready. We are back underway after a quick mound visit. She will fire that one outside and up for a ball and she's quickly down 3-0. Janisa Conway on deck should Valmont walk. And we'll take that. So Valmont will likely, she will not swing to the pitch unless she knows she can get a handle on it. She's down, she's up three and one. So Greer will pitch with three one count. And that'll be fouled back to run the count full three and two. 
and uh, this is an important out because uh, we saw, saw in the first game, uh, Jay f f four innings then got a little bit more vulnerable. Well, Deja above the zone for a strike. Hannah Lindsay behind the plate wanted that call bad. But nonetheless, as she discusses strategy with her coach, Bolin. They're looking so far a two run bottom of the fifth inning for the Wolverines. The big freshman bat in Janisa Conway is now up. Looking to make some more. Can, can get into the Hawkeye bullpen or if, if Devin Greer runs out of gas, it'd be huge. So Greer will fire off the first pitch in this at bat. Conway will pop that one up right behind the plate. Lindsay did not get a read on that one until the very last second. That's a big out number of Hawkeyes, but the Wolverines played two off that Kiki Thole bomb in the left field. And I've run ball game. Big, big out. So still two full innings of play here for the Wolverines to claw it back. Zerkowski settles into the circle again. Man, that's impressive to see. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not guaranteed any more softball games. Got to take it in. Take it in while I can. Well, you can listen to the broadcast. Anybody talks about it other than, other than me and Alex. Yeah. We are admirers, true admirers. <laughs>
I'd expect her to be set back. But it, uh, it would make it if, uh, if she gets sent back to second, um, it's a second. It's a big walk from Castalis, who has been trying to work on toning in that patience. She does that. It's a beautiful day for softball here in Ann Arbor, Michigan. Much better weather than yesterday. I was originally scheduled to call yesterday. Yeah, certainly. Wouldn't have been fun for softball or for golf. No. But we would have been fine here in the booth. Yes, that's we would true. Have been that's true. So the runners at the corners with no outs. And Ella McVeigh up in the top of the lineup will follow.
So this is a big chance for the Wolverines to claw this lead, this deficit back. Five run deficits, eight to three, your score. And uh, there will be a mound visit for the Hawkeyes. For uh, for her her uh, her uh, command circle, she has in 37 and a third innings, she has 30 walks. So, oh. like close to a walk per inning. So, uh, the Wolverines are going to have to be patient. And yep. I wonder if McVeigh is going to bunt. I think down five, I do not think that would I, be the smartest idea. But I wouldn't they think might. so. I wouldn't think so here. So, I think. Yep, so pitchers will stay the same. Jalia Ojo, only a freshman, so she'll she has time to dial that oh, in. Oh yeah. Dial that yeah. in, of course. But with Michigan's offense already being patient, I would rely on that here in this situation with runners on. You could potentially walk some runs in. You know, can't can't be easier than that. So Ellen McVeigh will step in. Batting over three hundred on the season so far. No home runs, seven RBIs. Is not hit for power. I don't think she has a collegiate home run so far. The cool fact she did play baseball with Kay or she played basketball with Kaylin Clark. So she'll foul that first pitch back for a strike 0 1 count. She's playing her home state school. She's from Des Moines, Iowa. And we'll see Bonnie Thule discuss something with the home plate umpire. Maybe I think they might be looking for. Cat might be looking for a catcher interference. They're going to go for yet another replay review. Two two plays in a row with some replay reviews. I love it. I, lo I love uh, replay reviews. Yeah. It's the more let's go to the monitor. Let's go to the, yep. Let's go to the monitor. It's in the, in the room right next door. It's fun for calling baseball when they go in the replay review. The person running the computers right next right next to us so yeah, we yeah. get a really good look from there but they're in the next room for this one so we can't really get a look so I think I think the debate is over catcher interference we'll see what happens after this review the catcher and the batter both have to know so I yeah I would I would agree I they didn't seem convinced at all so we will, an update on the Michigan baseball game that's happening right in front of us. And I think they just secured the win, actually. They won 8-3. No, I, th I, think, I think they just lost. Oh, oh yeah, sorry, Minnesota won. My bad. 8-3. to three. So I think they're I'm not sure how the first game of the doubleheader went. I will be calling that game tomorrow. So tune into that one. Michigan versus Minnesota. Michigan lost in the second game of the doubleheader, three to eight. And then our uh, our research team is currently researching the outcome of the first game. A research team. You got a research team? Yeah, yeah. And uh, our research team says they won 8-1 to one in the first oh, game. So right. that's pretty good. That's good. Good job by the research team. Yeah, really good job. We Michigan. pay them lots of money. Oh, yeah. Michigan baseball up and down season, but have really come into their own entering Big Ten play. Breaking back-to-back -back Big Ten champions series winning streak that dated back to April of 2021. They broke that um, on Easter weekend. So the umpires come out. I doubt they will call. We will see a runner change. Actually, I just noticed Avic Stalis will be subbed out for Janelle Lacqua. And they will oh, call catcher's wow. interference, so it is bases loaded with a top of the order coming up for this, the Wolverines. This is a huge chance. This is the chance. This is the chance. Indeed. So we have Stevenson on third, Alakwa on second, 
McVeigh at first and Ellie Sealer coming up the top of the order. This is prime chance for the Wolverines to, to really <laughs> make this game interesting. And in the sixth inning of the first game, McVeigh had uh, McVeigh had a catcher's interference with Pogue being the catcher. So, jeez, this is deja vu. Yeah. Wow. This is so oh. Sealer will step in in a big spot, and this is the exact kind of hitter you want on in this spot, nearly hitting 370 on the season, just an on-base machine, and just the perfect leadoff hitter you want for any team. So she sets into the box with bases loaded, no outs, and she take that first pitch outside for a ball. And a key thing to note, no outs, bases yeah. loaded, and no outs at all. It seems like a long inning with the replay reviews, but inning's still young. Ojo will deliver on the 1-0 oh, count, and that is over the catcher. Stevenson will run halfway. She's caught in a pickle. She, she will slide in. She's called out. I thought she was safe. That aggressive base running from Stevenson as that pitch was way over Pogue's head. She was caught in a pickle and third base in, and Avery Jackson did not toss it to Pogue, just chased after, after Stevenson and weird play. And so there will be one out. I wonder if they will not review it. Yeah, and well, yep, the no. hesitation there. Did not reviewed that, yeah. Mm -hmm. so Ojo will deliver on the first pit. Oh, no, sorry. The, that'll be another ball, 3-0 count. And it's yet another chance for the Wolverines to load the bases with Indiana Laneford on deck. You know, I don't mind that decision from Stevenson. The, that ball was way over Pogue's head. So Ojo will pitch it again. And that's in the dirt, and yet again, it'll be bases loaded, but this time with one out, and Indiana Laneford will be due up. And but but once you hesitate. Yeah. I wonder if they'll pinch hit in this spot, because Indiana Laneford, great hitter all around. I don't know if she doesn't hit too well in these situations when you just need runs quick. I don't know who they... Looks like they'll stick with it, stick with Indiana Lanford, as there will be a pitching change for the Hawkeyes. The third pitcher in this one, and probably a smart move. So we will see Haley down step into the circle, who I believe closed it out for the Hawkeyes in game one. Yes, yes, yeah, she did. I thought I saw her when I walked in. So Ojo will be out in this one. Haley Down will take her cuts before facing Indiana Laneford, at least who I think it will it'll likely be Indiana Laneford. I don't see why not. We have seen Blinding Thul delegate to other hitters, but I don't think there is a I don't I think this, this is the right choice. So we'll see what happens here. Indiana Laneford taking her cuts. As Haley Down will warm up yet again, seeing her second appearance in this doubleheader. So Haley Down, two-way player for the Hawkeyes, a relief pitcher and outfield option. Yeah, in her, uh, in her appearance yesterday, one and two-thirds, uh, no runs, but two walks in a... She's 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 uh walked at least one in the last three uh, appearances. So base is loaded for the Wolverines. Alakwa on third, McVeigh on second, Sealer on first with Indiana Laneford up, Maddie Erickson on deck. Infield playing in all around. First pitch will be in there for a strike. So Indian line for quickly down 0 1. Indian Lanford is the only was at one point the only run scored in this game. 
as that pitch is in the dirt. Easy take from Indiana Laneford. Pogue checks the runners. They are not biting. And uh, Pogue's defense on that ball and on on uh, the wild pitch, yeah. so she got important. To that one quick. Yeah. So Down will fire that one off, and that'll be up and out of the zone. She's down two and one. Great hitter's count for Indiana Laneford, the speedy slap hitter. Down checks the wristband. Kicks back, delivers, and that'll be low for a ball. She works into a 3-1 count. The Michigan faithful really getting into this one. That's a huge spot for the Wolverines in this five-run deficit. Eight to three ball game in the bottom of the sixth. Look who's on deck and in the hole. Yep. Down will deliver, and that'll be grounded just over Down's head, and this will be, be a fielder's choice. Alakwa will score, and McVeigh will score as well. So that is a two-run fielder's choice for Indiana Laneford. The second baseman in Yun. Got Sealer, who was advancing to second. Could not get it to Indiana Laneford, who is that speed threat. That was bobbled, but that scored two runs, so that is a two-run fielder's choice for the Wolverines. And it is a three-run ball game. The runner on second, and Maddie Erickson now up. So down will deliver. That pitch outside for a ball. Indiana Lanford thought about stealing third and thought better of that one. Michigan right back in this game. Yep. So down will kick back and deliver. That'll be fouled down the first baseline. Foul into the bullpen. So eight to five ball game in the bottom of the second. That's a, off a two run fielder's choice from Indiana Laneford. And maybe that's not the perfect way you want to score some runs, but nonetheless, runs are runs and it's you got yourself a ball game. Down delivers. That is low and away. 2-1 count. The Michigan faithful really getting into this one. Not as big of a crowd as it was the first game, but nonetheless still a sizable Michigan contingent here at the Hutch. So here comes a 2-1 pitch. Erickson will take a stone cold take. No thought of going around on that one, and that's a 3-1 count. And Kiki Thole on deck. She looms on oh, deck. Oh, yeah. So down will deliver. And that'll be outside for a, a walk. And Kiki Thole comes on. Looking for her. Uh, I'm not going to say it. <laughs> not going to say it. So Kiki Thole has had herself a, a week offensively and Looking to come up huge for her team. And she steps in as a game tying run. And we will see a, a yet another pitching change. The fourth pitching change for the Hawkeyes in this one. And we will see Jalen Adams step in. So Haley down, just went a third of an inning, allowed two off the fielder's choice. So those will those will go unearned. So Jalen Adams, who I pitched the first game, yeah, she will step in. So that's Iowa's fourth pitcher of the game. So she will take her cuts as the power threat, and Kiki Thole is up with two outs. Two on, two already came across for the for the Wolverines. Indiana Lanford on second. So anything in the outfield will likely score Indiana Lanford with that speed on the base pass. So if you're Kiki Thole, you just want anything in the outfield. But a, yeah, I'm not going to say that. Never mind. <laughs> anything in the outfield will will likely score Indiana Lanford. So we'll see. No other defensive adjustments for the Hawkeyes. Uh, but uh, uh, Jalen Adams, she's pitched in uh, in backtrack games 
lots of times, but uh, she hasn't pitched in the same day. So a, li a little bit different, but she is used to yeah. high, high volume um, and used to throwing seven, seven innings at a time, and she only threw four in the first game. So she's I think she's, I, th I think she'll, I think her arms are probably gonna be fine. Yeah, it, it's a little untried territory pitching, you know, two, twice in a day, but nonetheless, she does lead the team in innings pitched and, and in complete games. She does go deep in the games, had a complete game shutout against Michigan State a couple weeks ago, and she very good in this one earlier today. So Kiki Thole again is up. I think we will see a catching change again. She did let up two home runs. Hogue will come out. Through 118 pitches in the first game. Mm. Wow. The most she's thrown, that's the most she's thrown in the game besides Yushi Davis. She threw 128. But that's, an or that's not too atypical for yeah. softball pitchers but to go into the 110s, 120. But, but to right. come back again in the same day right, right. and do it is, is a little bit different. So fatigue likely will be a factor. So I believe we will see a catching change. I'm not entirely sure. We, more it just might have been a pitch com issue. Um, you see, hard to see the number. Well, we'll update. The Michigan oh. faithful heckling the Iowa coaches staff for making these changes. Kiki Thole. Don't you think this might just be, the music. Yeah, but don't you think this might be a strategy to you know, you know, let Kiki Thole kind of simmer down and let her get cold for a bit? You know, she's yeah, been yeah. Standing in the wind. Yeah, she's just, she's just been standing there taking practice hacks for about yeah. five minutes now. They're trying uh, to ice her. Uh, yeah, sure. What's going on with the catching situation here? You're right. Got like yeah, it's like four different catchers. Yeah, oh. Michigan faithful not too happy at all. Not sure wanting to play on. ball. Maybe something with her equipment is broken. I don't it, know. It, like, I think I don't know it's a yeah. They're playing with the pitch com of the catcher. They try to replace, yeah, yeah, it's a pitch com issue. So I don't think there will be a catching change. I believe it'll stay the same behind the plate and Skyland Pogue. Well, that could. I will. Up oh yeah, no, it's Hannah Lindsay will return. Kiki Thole steps into the box with a big ovation from the Michigan faithful as they feel like something big could potentially happen as Jalen Adams will step in, right foot on the rubber. She sets, delivers. Kiki Thole took a big cut at that first pitch, looking to swing for the fences on that one. She's quickly down 0-1 with two on and two outs. Kiki Thole rests the bat on her shoulder, waits for Adams who will deliver on that off speed, will float just above the zone to even up the count one and one. So far this is the most important plate appearance of the game. Yeah, you see the Michigan faithful really coming alive. And this one is this is a big scoring opportunity for the Wolverines to cut this lead. As Kiki Thole will wait on that off speed pitch and that'll fall outside of the plate. She'll work herself into a hitter's count into a two one count. Kiki Thole will set towards the back of that righty batter's box. As she lets that pitch go by and works into a 3-1 count, really showing her patience despite the ability to really e to even up the even up the game. One thing Jalen Adams can't do is can't hang one in the no, middle of the plate. No, she cannot. So Jalen Adams delivers, and that'll be fouled hard down the third base line. To run the count full, three and two. So it's a three-two count, two outs. In the bottom of the six with two on, Erickson on first. 
Indy Laneford on second. Kiki Thole, who already hit a home run earlier in this game in an eight to five ball game. Jane Adams will deliver that off speed inside and low, and that'll be a walk, the second consecutive walk from the Iowa pitching staff, and the bases will run loaded with Lily Valamont due up next. Lily Valmont had a tough day so far. 0 for 6 with a walk, but she did walk in her last at bat. So we will see a pinch runner for Maddie Erickson. Lexi Della Monica will step in and place a Maddie Erickson. So this will likely be her only appearance in this one. Della Monica, a primary pinch runner for this team, only a freshman from Queen Creek, Arizona. She's, she is yet another speed threat. So the two runners in scoring position are the two primary speed threats for this Wolverine team. So that makes the situation all the more dangerous. I believe we'll see another pinch runner coming in for Kiki Thole, possibly. Is Bonnie, yep, we will see Jessica LeBeau pose in as a pinch runner. As Michigan Faithful is happy about that one. She has seen erratic appearances of late likely battling some injury have not seen her in the circle at least for an extended amount of time as she comes in sometimes for a third of an inning and then comes out possibly battling some arm injury in issues but she comes in in the big spot with the pinch runner so bases loaded with lily valmont in with two outs here in the bottom of the sixth valmont will take that first pitch that'll fall into the zone for a strike yeah, Jalen Adams really going after uh, Lily Valmont. You can see the contrast in how she attacks Thole and Valmont. Jalen Adams will deliver here. Valmont takes a big cut at the off-speed pitch. To even up the count. To make the count 0-2, so she's quickly down with two outs. Scoreboard says 1-1. One one. I believe it's 1-0-2. and oh and two. Yeah, 0-2. Oh that pitch is outside, easy take for Valmont to make it a one-two count. So base is loaded again. Indy Lanford at third, Della Monica at second, LeBeau at first. In a three-run ball game in the bottom of the six, two runs already came across in this long inning. Jalen Adams will set in, will fire. That yet another outside pitch, even up the count two and two. Belmont steps in towards the back of the plate. Looks on to Adams, who will, who will fire and will rip that one down. Third baseline foul. We'll do it again at an even count. She got that pitch in yeah. on Valmont. Just did enough to foul it off. She's got Valmont in swing mode, certainly. 2-2 two -two count with two outs, bases loaded in the bottom of the sixth. Jalen Adams gets ready, Valmont waits. She'll take a big cut at that one, fouled down the first base line. That would've been over the press box had it not hit the top of the net. I thought that was coming right for us. Yeah, I, I, I jumped at that one. So we'll do it again at a even count, we have a young Lily Valamont fan right in front of the press box, she'd certainly be happy. So Jalen Adams will deliver, and that Austin pitch will go foul again down the third base. She is fighting, 2-2 two -two with two outs, bases loaded, big chance for the Wolverines. Valamont was on that off speed pitch a little bit, just a little bit. Valamont waits for Adams as she delivers and will pop that one over the press box. We'll do it in this at bat. She's battling. Yeah, this is a this is truly a battle. Great at bat from the freshman, from the redshirt freshman, Lily Valamont. Jalen Adams checks the wrist man. Valmont waits. And that pitch is outside to run the count full, three and two. Remarkable patience from Lily Valamont. What a take. Do it with a full count, two outs, bases loaded. Jalen Adams checks the wristband. Valamont waits, is ready, delivers, 
And that is fouled down the first baseline into the bullpen. And again, And boy, what a battle. Oh my God. Yet who is going to blink first? Yeah, who's going to blink first? We'll see. Lily Valmont staring down Jalen Adams, who set fires. And yet again, foul down the third base line. What a battle. <laughs> what a really getting into it. Janisa Conway on deck. Two outs, full count. Lily Valmont waiting for Jalen Adams, who delivers. And yet again, another foul down the third base line. So she's reading that off speed pitch, just getting it a little. Yeah, and that was hit well, just hit well. Just foul. She's seen it a little better each time. So yet again. Full count. This is loaded. Eight to five ball game in the bottom of the six as she will foul that one back and wow, what a battle. That could have been ball four, know, but yeah. but just fought it off. Just, just what a battle this is. I mean, this might be boring for you folks back at home, but no, no whoa. way. For a ball, Indiana Laneford will score. She will hype up the crowd as she sticks ball game. So Valamont comes up big in a huge battle against Jalen Adams, the Hawkeye eight. And Janisa Conway, the big freshman bat, will step in. That was a championship at that bat was from Lily Valamont. At bat. Wow. Just a battle. And she was down 0 2 at one point to draw a walk like that. What an at bat. So Adams will start with the off speed, and that'll fall into the zone for a strike. So we have two outs, bases loaded. Della Monica on third, or high and away, excuse me. Dean up the count one and one. In the first game, Conway got a hold of one off of. Uh, get past Lindsay. In front of that one, and that'll just trickle foul. And we'll do it again at a two-two count. And the We'll have a full count with two outs and a two-run ball game in the bottom of the sixth. Adams will deliver and will fire that one down the first base line, but Conway steps into the box towards the back of the plate. Left foot right on that chalk. Adams will fire, and that'll be ripped into right field. ways that the Michigan offense scored those runs, but nonetheless, we have ourselves a ball game. Two-run deficit as we move into the top of the seventh. So we see some defensive adjustments for the Wolverines. We see Riley Carcaborough at first replacing Kiki Thole and Janela Lockwood. They stayed warm over that long break. I believe everyone in the lineup saw an at bat in that last frame. So we're about to get underway. Again, Sammy Diaz. Last time she grounded out right to Durkowski. Mustaine towards right field, so that should pose a challenge. As Drakowski will, that pitch will be in the dirt, but no runners on. That's not a threat. Sammy Diaz will pop that one up over in the foul territory on the first base side. Nobody will get to that one. In there for a strike, big strikeout from Dirk for an out number one to keep this thing at a two run deficit. And uh, for Drakowski, just a Gritty performance, uh, not having her best day. She will have the 0-2 pitch. That'll be way high for that one. But even that high pitch. And had to make made an accurate throw despite falling in Cargaro with the stretch. So we get big out number three for Drakowski as she is quickly down 1-0. Next, big call. Michigan only needs two to tie and send this thing to extras or three to win it. A big part of the lineup. Yeah, Stevenson been on base 
Yep. Three times in this three one. Three, three single. Still in the circle for the Hawkeyes. Defense, defensive arrangements for the Hawkeyes still remaining the same from the first. Yep. Look at Salas on deck. So we're we'll finally get underway here. Michigan Faithful really getting into this one. Ellis jump. Adams will cradle and deliver. She'll take a cut at that one. That'll be foul down the third base line, and it'll be an 0-2 count. And I think if you're Stevenson, you just want to doesn't matter runs come across, lines they come across. That next pitch will go fall on the outside part of the plate. It'll be a 1-2 count. Two pitch, out and one. Here in the bottom of the seventh is Ava Castalis will step in. Into the zone for a strike. Two of her home.
home runs were against Jalen Adams. Oh, that, see, that's great. So Jalen Adams will deliver. And that'll fall outside of the zone for a ball to even up the count one and one with one out, no one on. An eight to six ball game, two run deficit for the Wolverines as they look to claw back here in the bottom of the seventh. As Ava Castalis looms in the plate. She will take that off speed pitch inside for a ball to work herself into a hitter's count two and one. She is not, he is not gonna let Ava Castalis gear up for the fastball. No. Ella McVeigh on deck. Castalis waits and lets that pitch go by. Works herself into a 3 1 count. She'll look to Bonnie Thole, gets the sign, steps into the box. She's set, takes that pitch. That'll fall into the zone for a strike to run the count full three and two. She wanted that one in her favor. She was about to take the trot to first. Nonetheless, late call from home plate umpire. And we'll do it again. Full count, one out. Jalen Adams delivers. And that'll be outside, and that is a walk. Pivotal walk. Again, pivotal walk for the Wolverines. And Ella McVeigh will step in. And we will see a pinch runner and Maddie Ramey come on in place of Ava Castalis. And Maddie Ramey again, a primary pinch hitter for this team. And that's where she sees most of her appearances so far this season. So Ella McVeigh will step in with one out. Runner on first and Maddie Ramey here in a two run ball game in the bottom of the seventh. And she takes that first pitch and will foul that down the third base line. An 0 1 count. Ellie Steeler, the top of the order, due up next. McVeigh will show bunt. Adams will deliver, will pull back, and that'll fall into the zone for a strike to make it an 0 2 count. Bay needs to get on base any way she can. Yep. She was hit by pitch in her first plate appearance and reached on a catcher's interference in her last at bat in the last inning. So Adams will deliver right now, and that'll fall outside of the zone. Make it a one-two count. Got on base four times in the first game. So McVeigh will show bunt, will pull back, she does. That next pitch will fall low and outside of the zone for a ball and to even up the count two and two. Good fight here to fight back from an 0-2 deficit to work herself even. She gets set in the box, shows Bunt again, will pull back, Adams will deliver, and she rips that one just over the shortstop's head. And Ramey, Ramey will advance to second, McVeigh is on first, that fired up the dugout, McVeigh is certainly fired up on first as Ellie Sealer, the leadoff hitter, will step into the box for the Wolverines with two runners on in a two run game. Sealer steps in as the game-winning run in this one. And that was a perfect amount of loft on that one to just get over Tory Bennett's head at short to fall in there for the base hit. Yeah, you, you couldn't place it better. Floated it in there perfectly. Just big hit from Ella McVeigh. And now um, it'll be interesting to see uh, specifically where the outfielders play because 
McVeigh on first. You, you know, she's she's me trying to score on right on anything remotely near near the gaps. I'm betting she's gonna outfield, gonna try to score. Yeah, outfield playing back, so they're looking anything in the outfield. They're looking to run up on and really get a throw back into the infield. Ellie Sealer will step in. Jalen Adams will deliver. She will take that first pitch, and that'll be a ball. A 1-0 count with two on. Ramey on second, McVeigh on first. Here the two-run ball game. McVeigh is the tying run. We'll send this in the extra should she score. Sealer is the winning run at the plate. Jalen Adams will step back and deliver. Sealer will take that next pitch. That'll just fall into the zone for a strike to even up the count one and one. Sealer, who has gone 0 for 3 in this one, but walked in her last plate appearance, will do it again. That off speed will just float outside of the zone for a 2 1 count. But in uh, in uh, two plate appearances today, she's hit the ball hard. Yep. She'll take that next pitch, just catches the zone. I thought that was low and away for a ball. Michigan Faithful did not like that call. But we'll do it at an even count. Two and two with one out. Two on in the bottom of the bottom of the seven. Two run ball game. Jalen Adams will deliver. And that pitch will be outside of the zone for a ball to run the count full. Great take from Ellie Sealer. Almost went around. She thought about it, but she thought better of that one. I can't count how many two strike takes yeah. this Michigan team has had. Stone cold, even when they're down. So Jan Adams will deliver here. She will pop that one right in front of us. Great catch by the fan right in front of us. Oh, the kid wants it, but we'll have to give it back to the event team. Come on, give the kid a souvenir. So we'll do it again at a full count, one out, two on. Jalen Adams in the circle. Sealer will wait and deliver. Let that one go, and that is a walk to load the bases and Indiana Laneford is up and you gotta wonder if Bonnie Thule walking up to the dugout, walking up to Indy Laneford and likely gonna talk about the possibility of a pinch hitter here in this spot. Indiana Laneford, a solid contact hitter but kinda not what you need in this situation. So we will see if they will stick with her. They're just, the whole coaching staff's discussing this just in front of their dugout. So Maddie Ramey on third, McVeigh on second, Sealer on first, her second walk, second consecutive walk in as many plate appearances. And so in the last three innings, Michigan's walked nine times. Wow. That's crazy that, discipline. That's why they are they have just moved the line and they're staying in this game. So they will they will stick with Indiana Lane for it. You've got to wonder if the sacrifice is in play. I, I would doubt it. But you never know. They've so. used Indy Lane for it in these situations. I don't know if you'd use her in this big of a spot. So the again, out is way too important. But out, exactly. So Indiana Lane will step in with the bases loaded. One out. Still in the bottom of the seventh. Jalen Abs checks the wristband. She will fire. Stone cold take for Indiana Lane for that'll fall into the zone for a strike 0 and 1. So the winning run in Sealer is on first, tying run in McVeigh is on second. Adams will deliver the 0 1 count. The off speed will fall into the zone for a strike. So Indiana Lane for quickly down 0 and 2. But we have seen this offense's ability to work them back into hitters counts or even counts. Do it again at 0 2 count. Adams will deliver, and that'll fall outside and up for a ball. One and two count. Maddie Erickson on deck. Michigan faithful chanting Indian support. Jalen Adams will set and deliver the off speed outside to even up the count two and two. Great fight from Indy Laneford despite being down 0 and 2. Not the first time Michigan player has been down 0-2 no. and fought back. Great tenacity from this lineup, up and down. 
Mindy Lanford waits. She will swing at that one. That'll be fouled back. We'll do it again to the 2-2 count with one out, bases loaded. Jalen Adams had trouble con consistently finding the zone these last two innings, just battling. She will make a mistake eventually. Well, she's at like 160 pitches so far today. So fatigue has certainly got to be a factor for her. She will get ready. Any Lanford waits. And again, that'll be fouled off third baseline. Avery Jackson nearly had a play on that one. Great hustle from her. But just got out of her stretched glove at the hot corner. We'll do it again, 2-2 two -two count. Jalen Adams checks the wristband in a 2-2 two -two count with one out, bases loaded in a two-run ball game. She will deliver, Andy Lanford will pop that over the shortstop's head, that'll fall in for a base hit. Randy will score, and it is a one-run ball game. Indiana Lanford again comes up big for third RBI of the day. That, that blue pit falls right in between center, left field, and shortstop. That scores Ramey. And we are in an eight to seven ball game and still base loaded with the with Maddie Erickson, the power threat. And just now like up. and just like Ella McVeigh, you battle and battle until you you get a ball in play and then just give yourself a chance and the ball found the hole. Man, that's the second time. Again, Michigan's found that hole right beyond Tory Bennett's stretched glove. It's short. So we will have a, fit, a pitching change for the Hawkeyes. We will see Marin Judish come up, the redshirt junior from Waukee, Iowa. For Maddie Erickson, the big, the big bat, the big offensive stalwart for this team is up in a big spot with the base loaded. Tying runner just 60 feet away at third. The winning run is just is at second. Indy Lanford at first. And she didn't pitch last year. Not seeing anything for her this year. But she did not did not play last season. She's the former transfer from Baylor. She pitched a save against Wisconsin earlier this month. Went two and two thirds, no hits, no earned runs, two strikeouts in that appearance. Mostly comes out in these relief situations. A big relief spot for her. As she takes her warm-up pitches. And Maddie Erickson getting ready. This is a huge spot for her. So to run you through the game situation is a 8-7 to seven ball game. Iowa up. Michigan clawed themselves back into this game. Yeah, Marin Judich only five innings this season. Wow, so this is a big spot for her. Bases loaded, one out still. It's eight to seven ball game, Maddie Erickson up. She has been 0 for three in this one, but reached on a fielder's choice. And one thing to watch, in five innings, she has two wild pitches. So, and you got some pretty, you got all three runners on base have speed and they will certainly be aggressive. Nonetheless, Matty Erickson's up now. First pitch is outside for a ball, 1-0 count. And the Michigan fan base has come alive in the last two frames. So Judas will rock back and deliver. Stone cold take from Maddie Erickson, but that'll fall into the zone for a strike. So Michigan hitters have been so patient the last three innings, and it's worked out for them. Maddie Erickson keeps it going. So Erickson waits. Judas will deliver now. And that ball will be outside. It'll be a 2-1 count. Remarkable ability from this Michigan lineup to work themselves into hitters counts. So we'll do it with a 2-1 count, one out, bases loaded. This bottom of the seventh. Erickson waits. Stone cold take and it's a 3-1 count. 
A walk ties the game and sends this into extras. So you gotta think, Maddie Erickson's in swing mode. Jujudish, you gotta have a pitch into the zone here. Or you walk this into the extra. She will deliver and she will fire this into center field. Baines will cover that. McVeigh will tag up and she will score. So this game will go into extras. And now we are a tie ball game, eight to eight. McVeigh fired up as she heads into the dugout and that's all Maddie Erickson needed to do. Tie this thing up. Yeah, perfect, get it deep enough to the outfield so McVay can score. Now Kiki Thole has a chance to win this one. Yep, as you said, Kiki Thole up in this one. In a tie ball game, eight to eight. And one factor, if this goes in two extra innings, Iowa, Right, pitch it right. Not the a pitching lot of pitches. Depth. That's true. So Kiki Thole will dig in to the box. She already hit a home run in this one. The double and a home run. She's had three RBIs on the day. She has certainly had herself a game in this one. And she's looking again to come up big for the Wolverines as there will be a mound visit for Judish. So Indy Lanford on first, Sealer on second, McVeigh who was on third in that pass at bat, tagged up in the sacrifice fly on Erickson to score the game tying run and will send this thing into extras guaranteed, but Michigan looking to end this thing early. But yeah, no, you're exactly right. The pitching depth for the Hawkeyes, that is definitely going to be a factor if this thing does go into extras. Mm. Kiki Thole uh, today, she's gone out once on a fielder's choice, but she has uh, she has five walks and a, a home run. Wow. Phew. So if there's anybody you want in this spot right now, if you're a Wolverine fan listening or if you're a Wolverine fan here at the Hutch or on the field, you want Kiki Thole right now. She steps into the plate. Two outs. Eight to eight game. Judas will pitch. And that'll fall into the zone for a strike. Sealer at second. Laneford at first. Thole at the plate. The 0 1 pitch. In the dirt. Both runners will advance. Off a wild pitch, both Sealer and McVeigh will advance, and now there are two runners in scoring position. The winning run in Ellie Sealer is just 60 feet away. We're walking this thing off. Now the possibility of another wild pitch. Uh, and you said it. For, for, for Mary and Judas, in, in, in the back of her mind, it's, it's, yeah, it's, looming. it's there. Eight to eight ball game. Bottom of the seventh. Two runners in scoring position. Kiki Thole. And that'll be a pitch out. Oh, yeah. Two one count. And you gotta wonder if the intentional walk is on. Yeah. See, handle, yeah, it, the intentional walk is on. Yep. For sure it'll be intentional walk to load the bases. No reason to pitch. No, yeah, to Kiki that's Thole. the smart move. It's Smart move. So Kiki Thole will reach. Not too happy, slamming her equipment down. And Valmont, who came up big earlier with a 14-pitch a walk that drove in a run. She could do the exact same thing and walk this thing off. Yeah, she had the at-bat of the day. So Lily Valmont steps in, bases loaded, Thole on first, Indy Laneford at second, McVeigh at third, in a tie ball game, eight to eight. Judas will deliver, first pitch, in there for a strike. Wolverines are doing it with walks this inning, three walks. 
Another walk would win it. So Judas will cradle and deliver. 0-1 pitch. That'll be grounded. Third base line. Foul. 0-2 count. So no matter what, the Wolverines force extra innings because they have because they have had seven runs in the last three innings. They were they were down eight to one at one point and have clawed themselves back into extra innings. Excellent tenacity from the Wolverines. So Valmont an 0-2 count, 8-8 ball game with two outs. Sets and waits for Judas who will deliver. And that pitch will be low and outside for a ball. One two count. In her last at bat, I think she started 0-2 as well. Yeah, you're right. So we'll do it again in the tie, tie ball game. One two count. Judas will rock back and deliver. And Valmont takes a big cut, and that one will be in the dirt. And that's a big strikeout from Judish. But nonetheless, we are going into extras. We got some free softball for you folks. Free softball. Yep. Can't complain about that. No. It's an 8-8 eight to eight ball game. Especially with a comeback of this caliber. Yeah. The Wolverines clawed back from a seven-run deficit. It was 8-1 to one in the bottom of the fifth inning. And they have come alive. The offense have really been clicking, and they've really scored in some unconventional ways. But nonetheless, you get yourself back into this ball game. Tied 8-8. Eight eight. And you got to think, you know, Wol uh, the Wolverines, their momentum, it, it's buzzing. So you got to think, you, you like your chances going into extras. Especially, still got Durkowski in the mound. And the way, way the last three innings have gone for right. the Hawkeyes pitching and the lack of pitching, um, really, this is really in Mich Michigan's favor. Right. I mean, you got to, you got to, uh, going back to your point about pitch depth. Every pitcher besides, you've seen all but two. Um, we have just Koviak, who has not seen playing time in this one, who has pitched. But the other options in Kelsey Winters and Mia Clark have not pitched at all this season. So it's likely that Judas is going to see the end of this one. Or if they do have to go to someone, they're going to go to just Koviak, who has pitched, who has only pitched nine innings this season. So you're, if you're the Hawkeyes, you're handing off the game to younger pitchers. You know, Judas, who's a redshirt junior, did not pitch at all last season. And then if that doesn't work, you're handed off to a freshman. Yeah, meanwhile, Lauren Durkowski is still on the mound. Yeah. She's still in the circle. She is really dialed it in of late. So we will see. Braley Klosterman step in, who's one for two. Walked and scored in their first plate appearance and singled in her, uh, an RBI single in the next one. Takes that first pitch outside for a ball. <coughs> so Zerkowski will settle in. The Iowa dugout really getting into it as Zerkowski delivers on the off speed and that'll fall to the bottom part of the zone for a strike. You don't see Michigan's dugout really do chance. It seems like other teams do it. Uh, Michigan really doesn't do that. Iowa's really getting into it. So we'll see Klossman donning the number 22 as that pitch will be in the dirt for a ball. 2-1 count. Well, uh, well, one thing, uh, when you're on the road and you don't have the fan support behind you. That's true. So that. gotta Even away, though, in like tournaments, energy. though, they never really seem to get into that. Drakowski will deliver, and that pitch will be in the dirt. Two consecutive pitches in the dirt for Drakowski, and you've got to wonder. I mean, she's at 98 pitches so far. Not too bad for going six full innings. McVay going over Drakowski, hyping her up. Klossman waits. <coughs> Drakowski will deliver, and that'll be high and that'll be a walk so Klosterman gets on as the go-ahead run for the Hawkeyes 
Marin Judish will step, will step in. She is a I don't have any batting stats for Judish. She will take that first pitch. I have high school batting stats for sophomore year, batted 525. Okay, wow, that's that's pretty good. Don't think she saw anyone like Turkowski. So, so this is her first at bat of the season in a big spot. She takes a big cut at that one for a strike, and she is down 0-1. See, we see Thol and uh, India Laneford back at their respective defensive positions here. So Drakowski will deliver. That pitch will be just outside. Ooh, and that looked like a strike from up here. The Michigan faithful definitely wanted that one called. So it is a one-two count. And that energizes Hawkeyes dugout. So Drakowski will deliver. Now be fouled back. We'll do it again in the one-two count. Yeah, the Iowa dugout certainly, certainly getting into this one. It's a really tough ass for Judas to come off yeah. the bench. In a big spot like this. So Drakowski will deliver. And takes a big cut at that one for a strike. It's a big strikeout from Lauren Drakowski. Her fifth of the ball game. We will see Avery Jackson step step into the play. She reached third on a walk in her first plate appearance, but has grounded out in consecutive plate appearances. So Dirk will deliver. Avery Jackson will show bunt, will pull back. It'll be a 1-0 count with one out, one on in Klosterman. So Jackson waits and will foul that one straight back, way back, and we'll even up the count one and one. Avery Jackson, three for 32 on the season. Two of her hits are doubles though. Mm. So Rakowski will set the off-speed pitch that'll fall into the zone for a strike. Great off-speed, really froze up Jackson. We are at a one-two count with one out, one on in this top of the eighth. Oh my, she had Jackson down to a knee. Yeah, throws her there. Dirk will deliver, big swing. Jackson frustrated, does a big cut, but two straight strikeouts from Dirk in the circle, her sixth on the day. And we will see Riley Moss for the sixth time, the fifth time in this one. Moss will hit that to Indiana Laneford who just gets out of her reach and that'll be a base hit cleaned or cleanly fielded by Ellis Stevenson and that is a quick single from the leadoff hitter and Riley Moss. And Jenna Young is up with a big two RBI single earlier in this one so she has had some offensive production in this one, the freshman second baseman. Really good job by Moss. Yeah, that slap that one in, in into right. But uh, L. Stevenson there gets the ball gets the ball in. That's gonna be a we will see. I was gonna pinch run. We will see a pitch runner replacing Klosterman at second. We'll see Echo Mattiello, the sophomore from Mesa, Arizona, who was who was the consistent starter in left field last season. Is primarily a pinch runner in this one. Hit 222 at for average, 10 hits, four RBIs last season, but she comes up as the go-ahead run in this one. So Durkowski is set against Jenna Yun, who will wait, takes that first pitch high for a ball, 1-0 count. Jenna Yun, the most dangerous hitter. Double today. Dirk will step back and deliver. 
Jonino will take that pitch, but that'll fall into the strike into the strike zone and even up the count one and one. Jonino Young, open stance towards the back half of the batter's box. Dirk will deliver, and that'll be popped up into right field. Stevenson will make the play, and that'll be the third out. So that's a big goose egg for Dirk in the circle. And Michigan has a chance to walk it off and win this one at the bottom of the eighth. Conway. Conway leads off the inning with Stevenson and Castales to follow. And this seems uh, it seems, seems like the Wolverines are in a very good spot considering how the last three innings have, have gone. Yeah, you got to think momentum is solely on Michigan's side here. Clawing back a seven-run deficit to put yourself into an extra innings situation. You mean, even if you don't win this, you got it. I mean, you cannot underestimate the grit in the heart of this team. It's so incredible to call this team and to watch it. And what a fun team to follow. And right now, eight and three in the Big Ten. Chance move to I believe they're to nine and three. Yeah, nine and three. So Judish will come back in the circle for the Hawkeyes. So we'll see if there's any defensive changes. Right now they're in sole possession of third place. They win. You can tie Penn State for wins at least. Penn State's 9-2, and then Northwestern, 11-1. Where's there. Iowa in the Big Ten standings? Iowa, they were, they are, they are ninth at four and six. Right. They would dr drop to being tied with Wisconsin for ninth if they, if they go on to lose. We'll see, we will see Matty Yellow at least at we see Echo Mattiello, who was the pinch runner in the second. We will see her play in the left. I believe that'll be it as far as defensive changes for the Hawkeyes. So Janisa Conway will step in to the box for the Wolverines. She is 0 for 4 on the day in this one. But nonetheless, she is still a huge bat for this Wolverine lineup. And has come up big multiple times in this season. So she will take that first pitch low and away. Easy take for her, 0-1 count. She's the only member of this lineup who hasn't gotten on base today. This would be a great time for her to for her to get on base. For this game, excuse me. So Judish cradles and rocks, kicks back and fires. Conway thinks about that one, but that'll fall into the zone for a strike. It's even it up one and one. Conway shook her head, did not like the call. Nonetheless, it's an even count, one and one. Conway waits, takes that pitch low and away for a ball, 2-1 count. When Judas was, uh, when Judas was at Baylor, she had two seasons around a two earned run average, the big 12, that's, that's really good. So Conway delivers, that'll be in the dirt. Easy take, 3-1 count for Conway. If she's walked, she would be the winning run with Stevenson on deck and Castales to follow. So 3-1 count, no outs, nobody on in this one. Judish looks at the wristband. Will deliver. And that'll fall into the zone for a strike to run the count full three and two. Just find a way to get on base, put some pressure on the Hawkeye defense. On wave sets. And that'll be popped up to second base, and that'll be fielded cleanly by Jenna Young, and that is a big out number one. Ellis Stevenson started the rally in the sixth with her single, but of course, 
Eva Castales, who has continued, who started the rally last inning. Right. Stevenson, three for four with three singles. Struck out in her last plate appearance. Will foul that one down the third base line. Avery Jackson will make the play just before the entrance of the dugout, and that is a quick out number two. And Maddie Ramey will come up instead of Avery Castales here. Interesting decision here. as you think you would want Castales' pop in this situation. So Maddie Ramey will step in, who I believe has only had two at-bats this season. So she comes up in a big spot here to get something going for the Wolverines. She will take that first pitch low and, low and away. I, that was called strike, look low and away from up here. She just looks a, a lot more poised than last inning. Yeah, she controlling strikes on a lot better. Right. So Judas will rock back and deliver. Maddie Ramey thought about going around on that one, thought better of it for a ball one and one. Judas will deliver. Ramey waits. And that'll be a ball, 2-1 count. McVeigh on deck. Spawning the other today has been the catalyst. And he will wait. Take that pitch. That'll be in the zone for a strike to run it even 2-2. Two and two. will cradle, Ramey will wait. Here comes the pitch, and that'll be a rocket into center field, and Maddie Ramey will walk it off. Who came in as a pinch runner, comes in instead of Ava Castales and hits an absolute rocket in the center field, and the Wolverines will walk it off. They come back from a seven-run deficit in the bottom of the fifth and come back to win it. Nine to eight. Whoa. Maddie Ramey. Maddie Ramey. <laughs> oh my God. I believe that's her first collegiate home run and it could not have come up in better fashion. Yeah. Just four at bats on this season. She wow. was 0 for four. She got on base once, and wow. oh my God. That was a rocket. Pinch hitting for Ava Castell, who. Pinch hitting for, yep. Wow, big shoes to fill, but did she fill them? And oh we my God. Her pop. The question, the decision, no question about it anymore. That was a rocket to dead center field, and how about Maddie Ramey? And how about this fight from this Michigan team? I mean, this whole team just come up in such a big spot, down seven runs in the bottom of the fifth. Came up big, two runs in the fifth, three in the sixth, two in the seventh, and the biggest one coming in the eighth from the uh, replacement in Maddie Ramey. And what a moonshot that was, no doubt about it. And Maddie Ramey is just amazed. The whole team is just supporting her. The whole team is excited and what a win. So, and this doubleheader, Michigan is two, up 2-0 two on the series and at least secures the series win. They're looking for the sweep tomorrow. We will have live coverage of this one on, of that one on WCBN. And wow, what a game. I, I mean, okay, Maddie Ramey, that's her wow. her, her third career hit. Really? And um, just sp sporadic playing time. Uh, yeah. the, the last two years, relegated to pinch hit duty and to, to pinch hit in a doubleheader when you've been sitting on the bench all day in 
in uh, the bottom of the eighth to come in for, a a uh, for Ava Castellas, who's already hit two home runs today. And wow. Come up like that. You cannot question the tenacity and the grit of this team. You certainly cannot. And man, what a win for the Wolverines. Great performance from the Hawkeyes today. Wow, what a game. And in the decision of Bonnie Thole to have confidence in Maddie Ramey in that spot, it paid off. Yep. So your final today. 9-8, your Michigan Wolverines come up big, claw back a seven-run deficit to win this in extras. They only needed one extra inning to secure this win. Lauren Turkowski gets tagged with the win. Marin Judish gets tagged with the loss. And Maddie Ramey comes up big to walk it off. Off a moonshot to center field. And any last comments, Kobe? Off this wild game, just two, just the the fight the Mich this Michigan team showed Man, today. Yeah, right. Really two incredible. Games, they had to claw back leads. Yeah, combined, first down 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 five zero, uh, and down eight one. Wow. And they come back. Man. Man, what a seer what a doubleheader day for Michigan softball and. Man. So glad I 